Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details with the world's most swirliest Porsche 911 restoration part 2 and in today's episode we're going to make a real impact into correcting the heavily defected Porsche paintwork. So like we saw at the end of the first episode, the paintwork on the Carrera 4S does leave quite a bit left to the imagination. All of those swirls, scratches, scuffs and marks have been caused by 15 years of improper washing techniques and the odd body shot buffing attempt. Due to the paintwork being so bad, I have decided to keep this episode purely about compounding the paintwork because there is a lot to cover. I want to make this multi-part detailing series the best on YouTube, which means that I have to educate you the viewers in everything that I know about paint correction. Perhaps when we've finished all episodes of this series then you too could be able to complete a detail like this on your own vehicle to a professional standard. To you already professional detailers out there then feel free to sit back and watch me do the hard work. It will be pretty good if I were able to teach you something new or slightly different, so without further ado, let's begin the paint correction process. Hang on, one last thing, can I quickly ask you a favour to subscribe to the channel because I really want to hit 100k within the next 12 months. The YouTube predictor reckons I'll do it in 10, but I'm not so sure. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit that notification button thing, and let's get cracking. A precautionary measure to take and one that in my eyes is very important is to read the depth of the paintwork across every applicable panel. This is going to help me to form a brief history of the car and this little gauge is also going to let me know if any panels have been repainted. My paint depth gauge was purchased from cleanyourcar.co.uk for around £150 so they aren't overly expensive. Readings of 220 to 260 microns on the bonnet was quite a surprise to start things off. You wouldn't usually expect readings like this unless the panel had been repainted. The passenger wing is also reading quite high in the 200s and when we move to the roof we do seem to get a closer to original reading. Between 90 to 100 would be a typical reading for the roof on a Porsche of this age. For the rest of the bodywork, I would have expected original readings of anywhere between 120 to 160 microns. I don't think I've ever had a vehicle in the unit with such inconsistent paint depth readings, so my consensus is that the Porsche has been repainted in a few areas. On the plus side, there are no areas with incredibly thin paint and with most readings between 140 and 200 plus microns means that we have a lot of paint to play with. The only difference for all of these potentially repainted areas does mean that they are likely to react differently to the compounds and polishes, which is something that I'm going to have to keep my eye on. I will also mention that you can purchase a far more expensive paint depth gauge that will measure all three layers of the paint separately and measure the paint on the plastic bumpers, but for one of these I imagine you are looking around £1000. What I like to do myself is to divide the readings by three to work out roughly what the thickness is for each layer of paint, i.e. the base coat, colour coat and clear coat. This will then roughly tell me what thickness of clear coat I have to work with. The next step is to tape up the plastic trim and any Porsche emblems, quite simply because I don't want to burn the paint from the Porsche badge and I don't want any polish stains on the plastic trim. I'm pretty sure that most of you will already be familiar with this stage and for me, I like to tape up these areas as I work around the car and not tape them all up in one go, which is just a personal preference of mine. So now we've determined that the paintwork is thick enough to compound and we've taken a good look around the vehicle to determine any potential troublesome respray work, it's time to conduct our first test spot. My preference for a cutting pad is currently the FlexiPad's 5 inch microfiber black ones that you can purchase from slimsdetailing.co.uk and for the Porsche I'm going to begin the testing with the Repez Green Medium Compound. Apply 5 or so blobs to the microfiber cutting pad to start it off and then work over a 2x2 section on the paintwork on speed setting 3 to spread it out evenly. What we don't want is huge clumps of compound on any one particular area of the paintwork, but what we do want is a nice and evenly spread out compound residue. Following the spreading out process, crank the machine up to speed setting 6 and begin hammering away at those defects. I do have a serious amount of footage from doing this car, so it's a good job that I also have lots to talk about. 
At this point, whilst I'm a minute or so into the testing stages of the compounding, I'm obviously seeing what type of compounding the paintwork needs to achieve the desired finish. The desired finish for the record is the best one I can get with a two-stage machine polish which is going to be in the region of 95% defect removal. Whilst conducting this initial test area which by all means can simply just turn into the full-on compounding stage, I am working the compound as if I were doing it normally and what I am most importantly doing is eyeing up the paintwork through the product residue to see if those defects are being removed. If the defects are blatantly being removed with this combination, then I will continue to cut the rest of the one side of the bonnet, but if I can still visibly see the defects through the compound residue and they are taking far too much to remove, then obviously this compound combination isn't strong enough. Fortunately for me and the Porsche Carrera 4S, this compound combination, which is essentially of a medium compounding level, seems to be working wonders. There's one thing to remember whilst doing something like a two-stage machine polish is that any self-induced uniform swirl marks, haziness or holograms caused from the cutting stage needs to be refined in the following finishing stage. It's all about getting the cutting combo and polishing combo dialed in for a successful paint correction. But like we saw with the paint depth readings, not all of the paintwork is the same. Well, one thing is the same, which is the level of heavy defects across the entire bodywork but who doesn't like a challenge? With the compound residue removed from one side of the bonnet and with a hugely obvious positive impact into removing those defects, I'm not overly fussed about giving the paintwork an IPA wipe down at this point. All that this will show me is a little more holograms and compounding marks from my own machine polishing work by removing the polish oils and residue from the surface of the paint. I'm pretty good nowadays at determining what level of finishing would be required depending on how the compounding finish is looking, so I simply eye it up with my very own eyes and come to my own conclusion. Those polish oils and residue that would be removed with IPA are only going to be masking a few self-induced compounding marks and holograms. The oils and residue are not going to be masking the original swirl marks or scratches so I don't generally IPA wipe down whilst doing the compounding stage. My consensus and to be honest like most vehicles of this type of paint hardness, the medium compounding combination is working fantastically and I'm going to continue with this combo over the rest of the vehicle. Back to taping up which like I mentioned at the start, I do like to tape up as I go. All of the rubbers on the side of the Porsche are taped off to avoid any compound or polish from gathering between the gaps. You also don't want to polish or compound over those rubbers because they will turn your compound or polishing pads black, so mask them off. So now I've found what compounding combination is going to work for this type of paintwork, I'm going to continue with the medium cutting setup and get stuck in with the rear quarter panel. As you can see, we do have a few curves to contend with, but when detailing, you have to work with the contours of the vehicle. In terms of removing those hideous defects from automotive paintwork that deny the vehicle of a true reflection, it's all about putting the cutting pad in contact with every area of paintwork for enough time provided that you've got the right combination dialed in. What I'm aiming to achieve whilst compounding each area of paintwork is to make sure that the cutting pad is sitting nice and evenly over the paintwork. The cutting pad needs to be as flat against the paintwork as it can be and depending on the hardness of the paintwork would determine how much pressure is required to be put down on the machine. The harder the paint, then the more pressure I generally put down, but just remember it isn't always a simple case of using a heavier cutting compound because we still need to refine any self-induced marks. Believe me, if you don't leave some type of self-induced marks after the compounding stage, then the chances are you haven't offered the paintwork a good enough cut. There are variables in this, but 95% of the cars that I've compounded, I have left marks of my own in the paint. Don't forget that the refining stage is capable of removing around 50% of those original defects, so just make sure that you can rectify your own self-induced marks. 
I want to quickly point out that with these videos, even though I do put a good amount of time and effort into making them, nothing beats a one-to-one -one hands on training session with myself where I can simply go through everything in more specific detail. Please visit jpdetails.co.uk and visit the training day page to find out more. With the body curves and contours of the Porsche 911 body shape, it really is a case of manoeuvring the machine into a position where it will spin comfortably at max RPM. When tilting the machine to get into those grooves and valleys of the body, whatever you do, make sure that the plastic backing plate does not come into contact with the paint. Whilst working some areas on the Porsche, the backing plate must have only been 2mm away from the paint, but because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and I am rather experienced with the machine, I can handle the pressure. By tilting the machine it will allow me to utilise just one section of the pad simply to get to more areas where the whole pad isn't able to. A Rupes Bigfoot is not a rotary polisher, so it does prefer to sit flat against the paintwork. By doing this tilting method does open up the opportunities to effectively compounding more areas of paint without swapping to a smaller machine. But do remember that if that backing plate does come into contact with the paintwork you are going to cause damage. With these microfiber cutting pads you are going to want to brush them out after every single use to make sure that those fibers are standing back on end and not squashed down. By brushing the pad out also helps to remove the old and dried up compound residue and the microscopic particles of clear coat that you've removed from the car. Depending on the size of the vehicle and compounding work required I generally use between 3 and 5 cutting pads. A tip for keeping on top of residue control within the pads is quite simply to only use an amount of product that's required. If you plan to cut a slightly larger section like I'm doing with this passenger side door, then you are going to want to apply more compound to the pad than if you were compounding a smaller section. A tip I learned from Larry at Amu NYC is if you are able to continue compounding or polishing the next section with the product that's already in the pad, then why apply more? I've begun using this technique and every now and then instead of reloading the pad with more product I'll test them on the next section and if my results are what I'm after and that there is still product left in the pads I'll just continue to work. By maintaining good residue control within the pads is going to increase their life and to keep them effective at removing the defects which sounds like a win-win to me. So with the technique dialed in and the compounding combination and a fair few hours of my own time, the bigger Rupes LHR15 Bigfoot was used on all areas of paintwork that I was able to get to. It's one of those things with machine polishing and detailing in general, which is the longer you spend, the better the finish will be. I'm one for a solid reputation in my area for quality, so I certainly take my time whilst completing one of the most important stages of the detail, which is the compounding stage. Please enjoy your last bit of footage from using the bigger machine before we swap to the mini Bigfoot.
one of these merino wool car dusters are essential for a unit based detailer to allow you to remove the settled dust without making any real contact with the paint. Also a paint depth gauge for you professionals out there and I'll quickly show you another reading from the side pillow. Repairs as a company have not made one machine to machine polish an entire car, Repairs have made a complete range of machines to suit the varying sizes and shapes of modern day vehicles. The LHR15 and the LHR21 are excellent machines for the larger panels whereas the Mini Bigfoot 75 is perfect for the medium sized areas. Like the side pillars, wing mirrors, areas on the front and rear bumpers and also the side skirts, which we'll get to shortly. I use a FlexiPads 3 inch microfiber cutting pad for the compounding stage on the Mini Bigfoot 75 and when used in conjunction with the Rupes Green Medium Compound, superb defect removal is always achieved. Once again it's all about spending a good amount of time compounding each area with this medium sized machine because in return the car is going to look fantastic. Just remember the longer you spend, the better the finish will be, which is more than likely my most common saying to anyone who visits for a quote. Again with these smaller microfiber cutting pads, you will want to brush them out frequently and only use the amount of product that you require. With these pads being a lot smaller, they do build up a lot of heat quicker, so you do have to be a bit more careful. Typically with the harder types of paintwork, then this simply allows you to cut the defects back a little quicker, but for softer paintwork, you need to take more care. The Mini Bigfoot was deployed on all medium sized areas on the Porsche, and with myself spending enough time, I found myself in a superb level of defect removal. A real sign of a professional detail is machine polishing behind the registration plates. This is a personal favourite task of mine because it's almost so unnecessary that somehow it does make perfect sense to an over the top detailer. Any car that comes in for anything more than a day's detail and if the plates are nice and easy to remove, unless the car's in for a multi day detail then it is second nature, I always like removing the plates. Don't get me wrong, it will look good when the plates are back on because there will be no edge marks where the polisher couldn't get to, so for a solid finish, it's going to look amazing. For those areas where the plates are going to sit over the top of, that will probably never see the light of day again, is a bit pointless. The headlights on the Porsche are rather yellow from 15 years of not being polished and a special request from the owner was to get them crystal clear once again. I didn't want to crack out any wet sanding on them because I knew it would be too harsh. I simply went at them with the Mini Bigfoot, the medium compound and set about giving them a real good compound. After 30 seconds or so, I could smell a real bad musky smell like 15 years of general crap that's caused the yellow film over the top of them kind of smell. Something that I've never smelt before, but it just goes to show that this Porsche was well and truly overdue a proper detail.
I did spend quite a bit of time restoring the headlights and good news for me is that they don't need wet sanding. The compounding stage restored the finish and they are now ready for refining and ceramic coating. In fact on that note the entire vehicle is now ready for refining. The compounding stage is complete and like I did mention at the start of this video there was a lot to cover solely about the compounding stage. I do aim for this series to be the best on YouTube so make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the following parts to this series. Turn those notification bell icons on and if you haven't already please hit the like button. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details and be sure to visit the JP Details online store, link in the description below. I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.